Yes, hello everybody. Nice you're here to join today's webinar, Film Scanning Workflow with Capture on 20CH. First of all, I would like to say hello to my colleague Yair. Um, Yair Shaha is Product Manager for Phase 1 Cultural Heri Heritage Application and he is based in the UK. Hello Yair, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Good afternoon or good morning maybe, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name is Renate Lange. I'm working for the technical support for phase one and uh, I'm based in Cologne, Germany. So that's what we are going to do today. We have 60 minutes. That's uh, a tight schedule we've got here. So um, I'm going to show the phase one hardware I've got here. Um, Yair will uh, tell us a bit about the uh, film scanning solution hardware we have from phase one. And then we will continue to the Capture One CH workflow. So the main basic steps you need to do for um, setting up a film scanning workflow. Uh, our system is really flexible, so you can do um, every sort of reproduction, um, uh, reflective, transmissive, and um, there are just a few steps you have to follow to do one or another. So the, uh, today we are focusing on the film scanning. scanning. Um, we will do that, and luckily uh, Yair is here as well, so he will follow your questions and answer them. He can write you personally and he can also unmute himself and answer um, and ask directly. So uh, if there are any questions that are in front of interest for everyone, so he will just unmute and then we we'll take it within the webinar. So um, I will just for a minute share my webcam then you can uh, see my setup I've got here. And um, we will continue with a few slides about the uh, hardware and I think Yair will take over for that. So I mute myself. All right, so again, hi everyone. Um, today, Renata will be using uh, the IXH uh, camera with a 120 millimeter lens and some extension tubes. Uh, the solution works just as well with an IXG. Uh, it's exactly the same design and so on, just a different resolution and of, co of course some other features and so on. But for this purpose, they uh, operate uh, in the same uh, manner. For both cameras, we're using uh, um, shutters who are made originally for our aerial cameras, meaning that they are designed for uh, uh, reliability, durability, they can last millions and millions of the actuations, especially for this application when you do uh, film scanning, you will use the uh, electronic shutter, so it basically lasts uh, forever. Uh, they all, they both have uh, LIMO connectors, uh, so again, it's all durable, one power source. The IXH can use uh, Ethernet uh, in addition to USB 3 or USB-C. In terms of lenses, they both work with the same lenses, and as I mentioned, in this case, we're using the 120 with the extension tubes. The camera you're seeing is mounted on an um, auto column, and we offer them in three variations. So the one we're using today is a uh, desktop uh, mounted. The column itself is uh, 160 centimeters. Uh, the other versions are um, flow mounted that comes with a desktop that can be removed and then we have the wall mounted version which offers additional flexibility because you can capture larger objects by just placing the camera even uh, higher. Uh, but in terms of operation they, they all work the same way, they all positions themselves uh, with commands from the camera or from Capture One CH. Uh, the film capture stage is something that we've designed. Uh, we designed it so that it can be used on basically any copy stand as long as the uh, baseboard uh, supports it in terms of uh, weight and size. Uh, another feature there uh, allows you to keep the center of the stage uh, 
uh, at the same position, meaning center to the lens as well. So if you are shooting certain um, format of objects and you are now changing to something uh, different, the lens will stay uh, centered. Yeah, then it, it has these uh, blades, if you, you can see it in the image, and those, the, the top ones, allow you to adjust it to support different um, formats of the objects. And then there's another two sets of blades that allow you to block any stray light and frame it uh, nicer. Yeah, the film holders, Renata will actually show them on the underneath the camera later on, but we make them in various different shapes and sizes. So there are film holders for uh, strips or for uh, sheets. Uh, starting with 35, going to 120, and then there's a uh, one for a uh, four by five sheets, for 10 by eight, and so on. For a uh, glass plate negatives, we make a film or let's say a carrier that has one straight edge that allows you to position the glass plate carefully, even if the plate itself is uh, broken or cracked or not uh, totally straight. Um, then there's the slide holder, which is the one Renato was just showing, and that takes uh, six uh, slides with a mounting mechanism that uh, lets you use any type of slide. So it can be cardboard, can be plastic, um, doesn't really matter. It, it's uh, spring-loaded, so they all sit at the same um, uh, position or same uh, film position or film film plane position. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Yaya. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's just one slide before we start the presentation in within Capture One. Um, yeah, uh, the first thing you, you always need to think about is what is your reproduction goal? So um, there are two basic goals there. They, they want, need to be achieved. Um, one thing would be that you do uh, object reproduction that you can you see the, the film slide as an object and you don't want to have any interpretation done for that so that's that means that you don't do uh, you're not doing any uh, conversion from from positive to negative from negative to positive and then you don't want to do any additional white balance um, for the tint of the film and so on um, second would be that uh, your interest is the image content and that means that you actually want to have the best results um, seeing all the details and um, have some kind of interpretation of, of the film. So if it comes to negative film, you want to do on a conversion to positive and you want to have some image adjustments, you want to have a white balance, you might want to have exposure and contrast. And um, uh, if you want to do that, then you have a lot of options and <laughs> maybe a lot of decisions have to be made if you actually want to do as little as possible to the image or if you really want to go and, and have a better contrast with it. And uh, maybe you also have a, a printout and uh, from this negative film and you want to achieve a similar result in, in reproduction. So you should be able to see Capture One now. And um, uh, a few settings has been done already. First of all, I'm um, showing you the hardware I'm using again, just uh, to for a quick introduction. So it's uh, the IXH camera system and what you see here uh, it's uh, two, two extension tubes, uh, it's a 21 and a 42 uh, millimeter extension tubes. Uh, by this, you can have a magnification of uh, 1 to 1 1.2 and uh, you achieve a resolution up to 5,500 PPI um, in this setup. Um, the, we have the phase one capture stage and uh, right now I have the film holder which holds a 35 millimeter negative film. You can simply place it here and there are two clamps that hold the film and flatten the film and after you inserted the film you can uh, use this tool to to make sure it is flattened and then you close the clamps and you have a very secure and very flat 
set up for the for the film. Now coming back to Capture One. Um, in Capture One, um, you um, usually work with sessions. This is a, a way to store your images at one place and every file generated by Capture One will automatically um, get into the same folder, um, the session folder. Um, and um, Capture One is that flexible that you can add and remove tools and tool, even tool tabs as you wish. So this gives you the opportunity to create a workspace, especially for your needs. You can simplify your workspace uh, so you can just maybe capture and crop an image um, and re remove every other tool, um, which is really useful for the daily work. So you're not accidentally um, changing settings you don't, didn't intend to change. So if you want to follow this webinar um, and have the tools at the same place, then please go to Window, Workspace, and choose CH, Transmissive Preflight and Production. Um, that's the main workspace. And you can see I've created my own workspace here. This is the, actually the one um, I'm using now. Um, the only difference with this workspace is that I've added two tools to the live view, which is the camera focus and the copy stand tool. Um, I will show you later on how to, to add uh, tools, and uh, this is the only change. So um, um, just use this one and maybe also enter the two, two tools if needed. Um, the Capture One workflow for film scanning. If we leave out all the capture naming and so on, um, uh, would go straight uh, to taking the first capture. Um, so what we do is we have those tool tabs up here. We go into the next tool tab and here you have all the tools um, which are handy for the first setup. So first tool is the camera tool. Your camera shows up here. And um, one thing I want to, to mention is that I'm actually now working with the Capture 120 Cultural Heritage version. The Cultural Heritage version is exclusively for Phase 1 equipment, for Phase 1 digital bags and Phase 1 cameras. So um, you can work with a, an XF camera, an IXH, IXG, uh, also old camera versions, DF, DF plus with a Phase 1 digital bag but no other cameras um, are supported. Um, so some of the tools like the auto crop tool and auto PPI and so on, um, they are only available for the cultural heritage version, meaning that you also have to have phase one hardware to use that. Okay, um, this is the camera control tool and I actually directly start and capture. This is uh, not calibrated, nothing set. But before I start all the settings um, I need to do for, for capturing film, I have to make sure that um, I have achieved the desired resolution and that the uh, object is in focus so that you don't have to move the camera anymore uh, in the further process and you don't have to focus, refocus um, again. So um, as I said, I added the camera focus tool and the copy stand tool to my live view. Um, if you are using the, uh, the workspace, as I said, then you just click with the right click or con, uh, control click on Mac and add tool and go to camera focus and then you and uh, copy stand and this will automatically add every tool you want or those two tools to your live view window. Um, I have a auto column um, phase one a copy stand and I'm using an IX. H camera also works with an IHG camera 
and by this um, I can have the uh, directly the information on the PPI on the resolution I'm on at the moment. This is because those two cameras can measure the resolution. If you have another camera like an XF, uh, then you can also enter manually the, the resolution. There are options to to actually shoot and uh, measure the res uh, resolution by resolution ruler. You can see it here. And if you enter that in the copy stand um, configuration, then you can also uh, use that tool to, to achieve the proper resolution. It'll state then what you have to do, how you have to move and so on. Um, the thing I want to explain now is uh, how to use the outer PPI um, with the outer column copy stand. You can choose a target. The target can be the resolution, the field of view, the distance, or the magnification. So if I stick to the uh, resolution, I can enter a value here and click on start. And um, you can see here um, that the camera is moving. First step would be to um, focus on the subject, on an object. And the next one would be to actually move the camera to, to this position that you really have the resolution you want. So this is, um, this is all I need to do. This is uh, really nice, nice and easy done. And then I'm done with this first step in my, um, in my workflow. Um, the next step would be um, telling Capture One what it is I'm capturing and what the light source is. And this can be done by the base characteristics. This is the a tool uh, also here in the pre-flight uh, tab. And then it's base characteristics. Um, the first one is the mode. And this is the relevant uh, one, which defines if it's uh, a positive or negative uh, uh, film. So by changing the mode, uh, you see that the image uh, automatically gets inverted. Uh, next thing is the ICC profile. Um, I'm using, I've got a LED light table underneath my table on the tripod. And uh, for this, the best choice is uh, the flat art reproduction LED photon uh, ICC profile. And uh, the next thing is um, that you choose the linear response or linear scientific film curve. The difference between those two film curves is that with the linear response, you also have a linear curve, but at the very high uh, tonal values, uh, you this this curve flattens a bit. So if you're uh, in in highlights, it'll lower them a bit so you don't they don't cut off that easily. Um, this is the base characteristics. And if you're planning to do the same thing now for another 100,000 images, then it totally makes sense to set this base characteristics as default. Um, you have this option for some tools in Capture One where you can say save as default for this camera. It detects this camera as it has an IQ, uh, has an 150 megapixel sensor. It detects it as an IQ4150. So um, you can set it as default, apply to it, and for every uh, new station, for, for every new catalog, everything you're creating in, in Capture One, and for every new file, um, this will be the standard set when capturing or importing images to to the session. Uh, you can you can also you can always reset the defaults or apply different um, defaults to that tool. Um, the calibration process is uh, not yet finished because we have one one more step which makes sense um, which is the LCC 
um, a flat field correction. Um, LCC stands for lens cast calibration, as it's been originally used for um, getting a lens cast out of the image. But we can use it now for um, uniform the light source can be used for reflective as, as well, but also for for transmissive. And I'm going to show how, how this is done. It's fairly easy if you watch on the webcam, because what I need to do now is to take off the film strip for a bit. And I move those blades. And um, then I need to take a capture. And this capture should be um, a, a neutral gray exposure. So I have to change the exposure time, take a capture. Let's see, can be Oh, no, <laughs> negative, sorry. Yeah, can we even a bit, let's say 100, yeah, that's good. Um, so now um, you actually have captured the light source and what you don't want to have, just get rid of this crop, okay? What you don't want to have is any color cast or um, light fall off. It looks pretty good, but um, uh, the recommendation is that you always create an LCC on that. For that, you just simply click on create LCC. Um, usually do not have to have a dust removal. Um, often it's uh, also not wanted that you have some automatic dust removal um, and you don't have to have uh, any wide angle correction. So leave this unchecked and go on create. Um, by doing this, uh, you can see the thumbnail gets a little sign up here that is the reference file for the LCC. And here you can see it's named by the capture name and it is set. Uh, you can take over this, you can take this LCC correction for every other capture you're taking and you don't have to change it unless you change the uh, the distance, the magnification or the distance to the object. If we would do some object reproduction, then you don't want to have any interpretation. So the white balance should also be set um, on the light source. So you you just um, set the light source as neutral gray, which makes sense if you have um, either film positive or you, you want to really do an object reproduction and do not want any white balance set to, this, to, the, to a film, for example. So I do that now. And um, yeah, well, that's, that's it for the main calibration. Um, if you want to reuse this LCC because you, you you often move this camera in this position, you can store also store it as a um, uh, as a preset and choose it whenever you need it. And this preset uh, is also you can also use in other sessions. Good. Um, I'm going back to my original exposure. Um, we enter my film stage. You can see the little marks set up here, so you make sure that you you're centered. Um, I'm moving my blades so to avoid stray light. I actually want to have a bit of the other images now, as uh, you can see that um, the autograph pretty good works uh, if you have a bit of the other images as well. Um, that's a decision you, you can do whether you want to have that or not. 
Um, I will keep my, my light on over here because uh, if I turn it off, it would be better for the capturing, but uh, not so good as you cannot, <laughs> cannot see anything of the hardware anymore. So I just leave it on. It's not, um, it's recommended to, to have a, a dark environment. Obviously, it will maybe reduce the contrast a bit. Before I take the next picture, um, I need to make sure that all those settings I have done now will be taken over for the next capture. And for this, I will swap to the next capture adjustments. This is a tool um, located in this production tool tab. So what you do, you move over here, go to next capture adjustments. And here you set um, what you want, actually want to copy. One thing uh, you need to know, all those captures, those thumbnails we have here, they are called variants in Capture One. And the primary is the variant which is um, highlighted with this border and also shown uh, in the viewer. So if you come across the word primary variant, it's always the highlighted or the, the um, selected variant which is shown in the um, in the viewer. If you have multiple images selected and you can see only one has this border around. Good, uh, back to the next capture adjustments. Uh, you can choose for the ICC profile, for the orientation, for the metadata and um, then you have this other you can actually set for, to copy from last. That means it'll take all the adjustments you did for the last image, um, which might include or might not include the crop. If uh, you want to include the crop, um, there's a setting. I have to jump into this because this is a, a, a question I often get for support. Um, if you go to the adjustments clipboard and click to the, the three little dots, you can say um, um, auto select adjusted, adjusted except composition. And if you have adjusted except composition marked, then it means that it'll take um, all the adjustments <laughs> except uh, the crop and the rotation. And another thing, um, metadata and um, star rating and color text, they are also excluded in the copy from last, as we think that makes sense, that this is not included. So uh, make sure you check this uh, whenever you, you think um, the crop should be included in copy and paste, and it is not. Uh, my personal preference is uh, within this other tab that you choose copy, copy specific from last or from primary. Primary highlighted variant, last, last capture variant. So if you say copy variant, um, no, copy specific from last, you also have the option to um, really check every setting you, you want to take over. Because sometimes in between the workflow, you just want to drag around the exposure slider and see what you can uh, can see, take get from the details, and um, maybe you do some adjustments, but you don't actually want to take them over for the next capture. So to be on the safe side and be um, be sure that you only take those uh, adjustments you want, you select. Um, the, for the next capture adjustments, copy specific. Um, yeah, that that would be it. And if I capture now, it should take every um, every setting I've done. So you can can see I I got this uh, base characteristics still set. I've got the LCC and. Um, There is actually not a, uh, a crop setting. This, let me just check. This is because I still have an auto crop 
uh, set for this capture. This is for my testing before. Um, I will come back to the auto crop a bit later on. Um, yeah, so uh, this is what you, what you get and you can continue now capturing the images. You can argue now that this doesn't really look right. If I <laughs> take a look at a print, sure, some interpretation has been done. So, um, and what we did is we did a white balance on the light source, which not really makes sense if you want to have a neutral uh, image from a negative, because you also always have this tinted emulsion, <laughs> emulsion in German. Um, you can try what you can get if you actually do a white balance on the outer side of the of the film that looks a bit better. And now it, it depends on what you want to do. If you if you want to really get the most neutral sense of this image, and uh, for this there are different ways. Um, one thing would be to actually apply a crop only on the inner part and um, see what outer levels can do with the colors. Um, you can see uh, we have the RGB channels. This is one um, bundle curve here and we have the three uh, channels. And you go and uh, go to the Capture 120 um, menu. Um, if you're on Windows, it's located in File. You go to the Preferences. You go to the Exposure tab. And here you um, set the Levels tool to Channel Mode, Red, Green and Blue Channels. Not R2B, Red, Blue and Blue, and blue Channels separately. And then you can have an Auto Adjust by clicking on this little automatic tool. So um, if you're not happy with that, I am at the moment, uh, you can still click on a neutral area, expected to be a neutral area within the image. Um, so if this is the correction you want, you can uh, leave it like that. If you want to have that applied to the next image, which is a similar image, then you make sure that in your list of uh, copy specific from last, you have the levels um, activated to copy. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to the new next slide. If you look at a webcam, you can see that I'm moving the film holder a bit. Um, place it in the center with K okay, taking an image. And uh, is there a question, yeah, yeah? There was a question about the ICC profile, so maybe mm -hmm. just when you go through one of these images, just show. I think we can see it on screen, but try to show the differences when you change the ICC profiles from one type of lighting to, to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a bit of um, difference, uh, not that huge difference like with the white balance. So, um, but if I move through the different uh, ICC profiles, Maybe you can see, uh, also here in the curve, you can see what's um, what's changing. There is um, the, uh, the main or the most visible change is if you apply the white balance. Um, but um, the ICC profile respects the spectral um, yeah, setting of the, of the light. Um, so uh, it should be um, um, fitting to your light source. And um, we made a great effort in Capture on CH to create a really good ICC profile that uh, can stand every test and, and ISO and metamorphose testing. 
or standards. Okay, I hope this answers the question. So I'm going back to this SSE profile. Um, Again, maybe um, if you if you do the exposure evaluation, you can see the tool over here. And um, there was another tool, which is the histogram. Let me, ah, I just create a floating window to show you that. Um, floating tool here. Here you have the histogram and the exposure evaluation and the histogram looks different because it really reflects the setting we've done to the image already um, and the exposure evalu evaluation only um, takes the, the white balance the, uh, and the base characteristics and the crop I can show you so also the exposure evaluation changes with the crop and yeah, the histogram also. But that's, those are the three things. The exposure evaluation is changing on its base characteristics, the white balance, and the crop. So this would be the yeah, tonal curve to look at. Good. I will uh, hold my breath for a second. Uh, to give you the chance to to ask questions, if there are any questions we should discuss now. Um, there was a question about uh, focusing and what happens if the um, if the subject is just an abstract uh, painting, drawing, or any you know any other kind of uh, object. And what I must say is that the uh, autofocus of the camera is uh, so accurate that it can actually focus on the grain of the film. So if the image itself, even if it's totally diffused and out of focus, it'll be the it'll still be the sharpest you can get because it focuses on the grain. But of course, you can uh, override it and focus manually. So there are buttons in Capture One that drive the lens back and forth and allow you to do it. Uh, manually um trying to see if there's any other question um yeah uh, camilla is asking if the ic profiles already include in capture one ch or is it necessary to calibrate with your own profiles we we provide these um let's say factory profiles which we created to work with uh, this light or that light but of course if somebody works with a very specific setup with your own lights um, or something like that you can obviously use your uh, own profiles um, whether you created them with a third-party piece of software like basic color or one of the others or um, adobe um, the adobe plugin but uh, in Capture One, there's the color editor tool, and that allows you to take one of the existing profiles. And if it only requires some adjustments to specific tones and colors, you can do that with a, a color editor and then save the result as a new ICC profile. So that becomes your standard one the next time you use the same, let's say, batch of film with this, from the same stock or with the same uh, uh, emulsion uh yeah there's some questions about uh, the slide uh, carriers and so on so uh, i don't know if i mentioned it earlier but w when we offer uh, the solution as what we call a kit that would normally include the copy stand the camera and the film stage and then you can choose the carriers and yes they are available uh, separately but we normally recommend using them with the stage because Otherwise, it's just a piece of uh, metal that holds a film. But with the stage, they work really well because the uh, you can adjust the, the the size and the support. I would always recommend having a chat with uh, the local uh, partner, local phase one partner, because uh, they can give you the best advice in terms of uh, costs and delivery times and and all that. Oh, that's that's a very good question about time. How much time does it uh, need or does it take to reproduce 10 images, for example? So the whole idea behind this design is to allow you to set things once. And as long as the format 
doesn't change or the lighting doesn't change dramatically or the exposure of the original doesn't change dramatically, uh, it will go as fast as you can load the, the film onto the carrier. So if your setup, for instance, or if it's a project that allows you to use more than one person, for instance, um, so one person can be just capturing, setting the camera and shooting, Another person can be loading film onto carriers and uh, offloading it, and so doing all the handling. And if that's the case, um, in terms of capture speed, the camera can do uh, two frames a second if you really want it. But I would say on a normal uh, job, as long as you have the formats more or less arranged, so you have a box with slides, you have a box with the uh, 35 film strips and so on, so it's not all mixed up, uh, if you can ar arrange them according to sizes and formats, you can probably do up to, uh, pff, as a single operator, I would say anything between 400 to 800 images in a normal working day, including coffee breaks and lunch breaks and so on and so forth. So, uh, and it's quite easy. So. You don't have to mess around with, let's say, uh, oil mounting um, um, options like on a flatbed scanner. Uh, everything becomes uh, faster and, and, and easier. So it's all about um, efficiency at the end of the day. Let's see if there's any more questions and I'll let you get on. Yeah, there's, there's a question about uh, uh, maximum resolution whether we can achieve four micron uh, resolution so the uh, ixh um, um, pixel size is just under four micron so if you can get a, a sharp image at one to one you're at about 3.76 uh, microns resolution but i must admit that uh, working at such high magnifications uh, a lot of it is down to the quality of the film and as you all know probably on uh, on especially on a 35 millimeter film uh, sometimes the originals are just not very good so yes you can get four micron uh, resolution but all you see is just big blobs of uh, grain so again it depends on what the subject matter uh, actually is and maybe i can now, just uh get this uh, browser window up for you. Um, oh, yes, that's useful. Yeah, if you um, go on the phase one web page, go to support, enter key be, uh, 1029, then you will get to a resolution table and what lenses are needed with um, what additional extension tubes and what um, magnification you can have and what resolution you will receive for um, different sizes. Um, yeah, so it's a very useful that... guide. Uh, if, you, if you're starting a project and you're wondering, well, what kind of configuration should I be looking for? So we have this uh, table online and we're actually about to finish a, an updated version of it that also includes all the uh, popular um, film formats but also paper formats and so it's easier to kind of find out exactly what lens and what extension tubes you need for every project right shall we let you okay get on? yeah so first thing i want to show you this uh, also um ch exclusive tools so capture one ch exclusive tool is the auto crop where Capture One actually can detect um, edges of the film or any other uh, rectangular um, object. And uh, this tool can be found here in this um, uh, tab. It's um, here and um, as you noticed maybe before, um, you can always go, if, you, if you're if you looking for a special tool, go to Window, Create Floating Tool, and then choose whatever tool you need. And then you can actually also drag it into the, the tab. So if you want to have, uh, for example, the LCC tool also showing up in, within this tool tab, then you can just drag it in here and remove it if you don't want it anymore. So. Um, but the crop, um, 
standard and also available in Capture One Pro is the usual crop and rotation and flip tool. Um, this is uh, for cropping manually. You can choose your crop. You can um, give it a special aspect rate, ratio. You can um, set it as a preset. You can um, apply it to other images, but it will be always at the exact same position and same size if you just apply it to other images. Um, then if you want to have a, an additional rotation, then you need to go to, to the rotation and flip tool. Um, here you can yeah, rotate your image and, and flip it. And um, um, if you if you have uh, the, the slides or the film upside down or uh, the facing upside down, then, then you just flip horizontal. You can find this in the rotation and flip tool just for you to know if you if you need that. Um, a combination of crop and rotation is the auto crop uh, and also has this option to to detect the edges. So um, in this case um, I would choose the method uh, roll film and uh, click on by clicking on method you can see what you also have is the loose material is just any rectangular shaped uh, subject and um, fixed size always means that um, when detecting a crop you always want to have a fixed pixel size for the crop it's uh, very important if you have for example a book a book scan and you don't want to have those pages to crop to different sizes because it just cannot match them properly afterwards um yeah so uh, in this case it is a film slide i choose roll film fixed size straighten does the rotation of the image uh, here you can choose if you just want to have an average over all edges and um, or if you choose a specific edge as a reference for your rotation so if it's not exactly 90 degrees then um, it will it'll just take the, the bottom edge. You can tell Capture One uh, how good the contrast is. You can play around with those options a bit if it doesn't find a proper crop and maybe the, um, the contrast uh, is low, then you want to choose a low object background contrast. So this helps Capture One really find the, the correct crop. And you can also uh, set it to an auto levels on interior crop. So if you uh, define a crop and um, add some padding around it. So for in this case, maybe you you have this uh, interior crop for the image content, but you also want to have the, um, the sides of the film strip be included, then you add a padding and uh, you can also do it the other way around. You, you can have a negative padding, so it'll shrink the crop by this pixel size. If I use the roll film method, you see the only option is fixed size. So you have to uh, tell Capture One what size the crop should have. Um, and you do that by setting the master crop. So uh, if you want to have it, for example, to a fixed pixel size or you want to have it um, a fixed millimeter size depending on your output resolution um, then um, then go here enter those values to the crop and set it at master crop and then um, just auto crop and here you can see it, it does the crop and includes the padding if I choose the other image as well, I can do the outer crop here and, or oh, maybe I didn't remove the crop before. So, outer crop, and it crop both images. And the very cool thing about it is that um, you can set it on capture. So you uh, capture an image and it 
uh, automatically applies um, the crop on the next image. And what you also can see is that um, uh, now I've got some color tagging here be below. Um, this is uh, the auto, I think it's evaluation cropping um, um, color tag, which means that the blue um, is the reference for the auto crop. And by cropping, it gives the images a color tag um, telling you if it's uh, seen as a good crop, if it uh, thinks that the edge has been clear to see, um, then it get, gets a green one. And then um, yellow is um, for, okay, I'm not really sure, maybe some adjustments are needed for the crop. And there is a, also a red um, color tag, which means um, no good. <laughs> so you really have to adjust the the auto crop. So no wonder that the LCC file with any, without any uh, objects and gets a, a red color tag because I had this auto crop on capture um, activated by when, when doing the LCC. Good. Um, last but not least, we have four minutes left. Um, film styles. Um, you can um, save a set of adjustments like you've seen here. Um, this is all copied from, from the image. You can save it as a style. So you can take over um, this the settings to other sessions, to other um, uh, jobs. So you don't have to have this reference file to copy from. And uh, Capture on CH also includes a few um, uh, color negative uh, film styles you can use as a good starting point, maybe. Um, I've got a pretty good example here from uh, um, from the film scan, negative scan. And um, I can, yeah, use those styles and just check which one works good and uh, this one works best and as it is only a set of adjustments you can go to into every tool which has been used by the um, by the style or altered by the style and 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 change the settings to your needs so you can um, play around and and do some further adjustments and if you're happy with the results you just store it as an as a new style and then you have your your settings but it is often quite valuable um, to have a good starting point for your uh, um, for your adjustments which really is a time saver um, good um, uh, okay, looking at it, I see a few more questions. Uh, I think yeah. we can answer them quite quickly. One, which is a good one, asking about the uh, dust and the scratches and whether we have any mm -hmm. tools in Capture One to deal with those. So, in Capture One, there are the, the retouching tools that you're familiar with or you might be familiar with from Capture One Pro. So, you can do some, um, some local corrections, lo local adjustments through uh, layers. But in general, and you may have noticed that the, the stage uh, is designed with four uh, feet, which means it's, it, it sits about 15 centimeters above the, the light panel, the LED panel. Mm -hmm. And what does, what does this do is uh, creating a diffusion. So the light is not that direct. It comes from all different uh, angles. And the result is that the, there's a lot less in terms of a, uh, scratches and dust that are uh, actually seen in the image. Uh, but to, to answer the actual uh, question is that we do not have a one-click dust and scratches uh, filter or something like that. Um, another question. Will it work with a Nikon uh, 850, for instance? The easy, easy answer is no. The Capture 1CH only works with a phase one uh, cameras. 
It also supports files from some uh, leaf bugs, and if you have a leaf credo bugs, it also runs uh, tethered with it, but no support for uh, DSLRs or anything else. Yeah, question about color cast, and when you're working on the negatives, uh, after all the adjustments, there was still some color cast left, and you can mm. work on, a, on an individual uh, image and get it nailed as, you know, as close as you like, and in this case, we actually have a prints from the same uh, from the same piece of film, so you can actually try and match the, the the original print if you had one. Of course, sometimes that's not possible, and you wouldn't have the yeah. You can see it in the in the image there. So uh, yeah. you can try and either pick a gray spot in the image, like if it's a motorbike, you can pick the engine case or the pavement or something like that, or do it totally manually and once this is nailed as long as your batch doesn't change and as long as you know the color cast is the same in all those images it'll just look uh, the same and of course you can then save that as a style so when you come to the next uh, batch and as long as it's from the same stock for instance or from the same age roughly and so on you shouldn't have to 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 deal with a lot of it uh, uh, any mm -hmm. further uh, I actually have have one uh, my standard film negative uh, style yeah. here I stored. Uh, it works pretty well on that one actually. So this is one I I've created. So um, yeah, so this, this is pretty could, new. Could be for, pretty good. Yeah, and these images I actually I actually took them like 15 years ago, so I roughly vaguely remember how they looked like, and I think it's it's kind of okay. Um, there's a question uh, for glass plate uh, digitization. Does the holder cut off the edge of the negative? So the answer is no. Basically, the 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 glass holder is always larger than the actual glass plate, and it has one uh, sharp edge. So you push the glass plate against that edge meaning that you have a lot of areas left around it that you can either block with the blades that are part of the stage or some people create their own masks and use uh, pieces of card and things like that so yeah you don't have to worry about cutting off uh, any pieces um how do you know the right exposure um yeah, and I think you kind of touched upon it, uh, Renata, when you talked mm. about the exposure uh, evaluation tool. And um, yeah. we can probably show it again. And it's important to look at that one as opposed to looking at the histogram in, let's say, the levels tool. Mm. Um, uh, if you... Yeah, uh, uh, actually, you can... Uh, when interpreting the image, then you actually want to have your tonal curve somehow centered. But you always want to make sure that your most uh, transmittive uh, area of the film is uh, uh, not overexposed. So by this, you can always be sure that you don't lose any um, um, details by clipping. So it's a bit of um, just checking for, for um, the density of the, the film, actually, and then set your exposure for that. Okay, uh, there's a more general question about recommended exposure times and the uh, aperture and so on. So I would say normally our lenses are optimized for say f8, f10, something like that. You go, you go beyond f10, you will start possibly seeing some uh, diffraction, which is only normal. But if the film is held flat, like with one of the film holders, usually f8, is, is more than enough. Uh, exposure times may vary depending on the, the actual subject matter and the amount of lighting you, you throw at it or because you can change the in intensity of the of the LED panel. Um, just trying to see if there's anything. I'm, I'm, I don't think we'll be able to cover all those questions so I do apologize but we we will keep them and we'll try to get back to you maybe individually because there are some there are some questions about the uh, specific uh, costs and prices of things. So I think that will require, you know, some further 
uh, understanding of the specific needs and so on. So I do apologize. We can't answer all of these questions now. Um, just seeing if there's anything else that everybody can uh, benefit from. Um, do you have any full resolution files available for evaluation? Yes, of course. So again, uh, I mean, we have your contact details, but uh, if, if anybody has asked the same questions, do get in touch with us and we can send you raw files and we can arrange a, a trial version of Capture One CH as well. Uh, that normally works for uh, 60 days, so you can actually have a play. Just remember that you need phase one files. It won't work with uh, files from uh, other cameras. Uh, yeah, okay. have I missed anything? If, <laughs> yeah. Maybe um, I I would like to go to the, the short summarize of the workflow steps. Yeah. I have a few PowerPoint um, slides here. I hope that helps a bit if you watch the recording later on that you easily can follow up with the, those steps. So um, I'll make it a, a short run through. It's uh, five past two. I have, hope you have another two minutes. So um, just for you to remember, the steps uh, for film reproduction would be, first of all, uh, you need to set the focus and uh, magnification or the resolution, um, meaning that uh, you fix the, the distance to the object and the focus. So all other calibration steps still be valid for further um, slides. And um, next would be to set the base characteristics. It's important that you do that before you do any exposure evaluation or setting the exposure time because uh, the film curve will change that. And also the LCC correction will change that. So please do that before you actually set your exposure right. Uh, base characteristics regarding the, f the mode, film positive, film negative, or photography um, for object uh, reflective reproduction, the ICC profile that fits to your light source, and the curve linear response or linear, uh, linear scientific. Um, if you are taking over um, um, images from an older version of Capture One, you can upgrade the engine to Capture One 20 to yeah, use the latest uh, process engine. Next step would be to do a LCC, the flat field correction at uniform light source. You, you do a mid-gray exposure um, to have enough space, space um, with, um, more light or more dark uh, tonals that you have some space to, to reduct, uh, reduce the uh, light fall off. And um, you can find that uh, in the LCC tool. Next thing would be to do a white balance, um, as I said, with positive film reproduction or object reproduction, where you don't want to set a white balance on, on the toned layer. Um, then you do that on the light source. Uh, after that, you um, use uh, your object again. You, you, end, you put in the film holder and uh, set the exposure. So what you want to achieve is that your most transparent part of the, of the slide of the film um, is set to near white. Oh yes, and please use exposure evaluation to, to control the, the exposure. Um, then you can think about a crop. This is a step you can either do before you start your job uh, capturing all the slides or all the films, or you can uh, do that afterwards. If you do it up front, you have the option to, to use the auto crop and apply it to on capture, actually. And with the roll film method, um, Capture One tells you by adding a color tag if Capture One <laughs> thinks that uh, it could do the, the crop really good, or maybe you have to check that in the post processing again. Um, yeah, uh, if you're not using CH, then you have the crop and rotation and flip tool. And if uh, the settings you set in here can be applied to all other images by copy and paste. Um, 
after you've said all this, uh, please make sure that your next capture adjustments are set um, correctly. So you want to uh, set your ICC profile orientation metadata uh, separately, or you can use other and copy specific from primary or just copy from last um, to take over settings you've done with your, let's say, reference file. Um, you can also apply a style right away. So like uh, I showed you before, if you have the film style, which works really well for your images, you don't have to worry about um, uh, using a, a method for film negative. You just choose to write a style for, for the film and then you just start capturing very, very fast and efficient. Um, yeah, and uh, here's uh, what we deliver with Capture One CH. We have um, film styles for negative film, color negative film, for color slide film, and 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 some other styles you can just uh, check and and try out um, for more for photographic purpose. But um, the style can be a really fast and easy starting point for your adjustment of the image. Maybe you can get the best result right away and you're really happy with that. Maybe you have some have to do some tweaks with that, but uh, then still it is uh, fast and to st store it as a style again and, and, and apply to your other images or use it as a default for the next capture. That's it. It's uh, eleven minutes past two. Thank you for everybody who stayed until now and everybody to to join us today. As Yaya said, we will look through the images, through the um, questions, and see if we can uh, uh, answer those questions we, we didn't answer within the webinar. Um, you hopefully received the newsletter, so we announce further. Um, webinars uh, by by newsletter again. Uh, if you're not receiving it, um, then just go and um, uh, click on newsletter in your profile, and you will receive the emails for that. If you have questions, you might want to use this contact or the um, webinar industrial email address. Uh, which is mainly for organization of the, the whole webinar. So you won't get really fast support answers for that. I would like to ask you to, to use our support web page for that. And because we are really, really fast in answering um, phase one uh, related uh, support questions. So yeah, and I, um, I can add also that we, we have presence on social media. So if you want to follow us you can find us on facebook and twitter and linkedin just look for uh, phase one cultural heritage and usually it'll be actually one of us um catching those uh, questions or inquiries uh yeah if we are if you're lazy like myself you can just scan the the qr code in front of you and that will take you to the cultural heritage uh, contact page so you can find us there as well. And there's a list of uh, your local um, cultural heritage partners. So if you'd like to speak to somebody local to you and get uh, somebody over the phone, because we are spread all over the world, but we have uh, partners in almost every country. So it's easier to possibly talk to somebody local. Okay. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend or good Friday, first of all. And um, maybe see you next time. Goodbye.